Okay, this um, project is for a customer. How long did it take you to do it? Today is my third day. And you are? I am Atomic Bob, and we have a company, Atomic Dice Studio Arts, but if you look on all of our social media, email, everything, you're going to find just Atomic Dice. That's all you need to look up, and you'll find everything you need. And you're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Instagram. Okay. Um, so, what elements did you paint on this Harley? I started, the customer and I um, decided to give it kind of a, they call it murdered out. And it's normally a gloss black with flat black. But being that this is a glossy type red, we decided to keep all the elements toned down. Only black, only dark gray. Then on the black, like in here, you have the dark gray, medium gray. And uh, we're just trying to keep it kind of subtle, but there are many elements to it. I did the rear fender. Um, I did the back of the bags the way uh, he requested. Um, took the badges off. Right now I'm hand lettering the Harley Davidson logos that were originally on it. So we're working with that right now. Um, we did the center console up top with a little bit of striping and some lettering. But I'm just kind of working through getting this and the customer Part of his logo, he's actually an oil field welder. Part of his logo is brass knuckles. So we're gonna put some here, some on the other side. We have some on the back. Just sign kind of some neat things to mix it up. Did you have creative freedom? I'd say 90%. And it's not really on this one, creative freedom. Him and I spoke about the whole project and we really, you know, really worked it out to even the point of him coming over and checking out things um, just to get approval. Did you have changes? Uh, we did actually. There was an element that him and I both agreed on. <coughs> we did a set of brass knuckles up on the center console and I knew right from the moment I started them I didn't like them. And when he got here, he said the same thing, and I said, okay, and I wiped it out, because if I don't like it, I don't care how far it's gone, it goes away. I take it right off, and especially if the customer says that. I always try to make sure everybody's happy, but I gotta make sure I'm happy too, because so, it goes out there with my name on it. So do you warranty your work? We do for a year. Um, I warranty against chips, scratches. I've never had a fade issue. I use one shot enamels only, and I've never had it come back faded. I see artwork that's been done for 20 years and it still looks great. Um, one shot enamels is pretty much what us painters and artists use primarily for. Uh, what we do. The only thing I don't warrant is, and I, I've tested this on my vehicles, you can pressure wash this, but you have to wait a good six months. These are oil-based paints, and the oils need to evaporate out of the paint to harden it up. I just did this part yesterday. It's dry, but soft, and you have to let it harden up and let it, they call it cure. You have to have it cured up. So, when can you wax it? I usually tell people wait about two weeks. Let everything cure up. Let that paint harden. It has to be, it has to be hardened up. Waxing protects it, and it also, being that this is a glossy enamel, will keep it or will even shine it up. Sorry for the background noise. We live in the country, so you will definitely hear some trackers going by. And shop dogs. And our shop dog keeps walking in.
Um, so when can you wipe off the chalk marks? I wait, normally <clears throat> when I do it, I can wait, I use a water soluble pencil. Um, some of the guys use Stabilo's. I get mine through a different outlet and they're exactly the same, but they, it's not the major cost. Um, so where do you get them? I get them a pack of cans. They are just black or white, water soluble, which is good with this. Since this is oil based, if I make a mistake or I need to wipe it, I can wipe that, I can even wipe off my enamel. Now it's a drag strip out here. Okay, yeah, so, now we have a drag strip. Now what did you say about wiping um, it off? I can wipe it off <laughs> with water and the oil base paint, or no, I can wipe the oil base paint if I make a mistake or I start a stripe job and I don't like it. And the stencil that I put up or the guideline or anything is still there. Um, but yeah, I use those. They're a, com a product called Derwent that makes them. Or no, I'm not, I'm sorry, not Derwent, Darice. Darice? Darice. Darice. Mm -hmm. Darice. And did you say the paint was soft for about a week? Yeah, it it's still it's still a little bit fragile. You can you can definitely ride this bike. And like I say, it, it, to cure it up a little bit more, if you want to put it out in the sun, that's good. Um, just riding it gets a little bit of air across it, which helps. But you got to watch. You don't want to catch bugs and stuff. It, it's just it's, you have to be kind of careful with it. For um, that good amount of time. What's a good amount of time? To get it to cure, yeah. like where you're safely able to ride. Yeah. A week, week and a half. So a week and week and a half. Okay. And actually, right now it's very humid, mm -hmm. which is also hard on my paint. Being that this paint's enamel, it gives it. It almost turns a glue-like substance. I use a product from one shot. Yeah, one shot called. Um, it's called Chromaflow, and it helps in different situations when it's either too hot or too cold. So you use one shot enamels, Chromaflow, and what brushes have you been using? This one mostly, I've been using MAC Hanacane brushes. They are a, um, a type of lettering brush, and these that I'm using right now are products that I love for liners. They're um, Steve Kafka is a kind of a legend in this business. He does uh, beautiful scroll work, and I've been using his liners. These I've been using these for probably since I started six or seven years, and when they wear out, which they do take a while to wear out, but when they do, I go buy a brand new set because I just, I've never found a set of liners that works this well. So where do you buy them at? I get them at Summit Racing. Summit Racing? Yeah, they, you can order them online, but we're 45 minutes from Summit Racing, so we go up there for quite a bit of things. I've gotten uh, one shot paint up there. They got a good line of brushes. Um, they're, they're right up the road too, which is great. So where can you paint like this? I know you're doing it in our garage. I can paint anywhere. Um, in fact, uh, tomorrow I leave for a show and I just take my box. I have a little, little welder's toolbox full of paint, brushes, oil, everything I need. I can paint on site anywhere and I do travel a lot uh, to do this, but I can do it anywhere. Obviously, being here in my own shop, I have all the elements I need comfortably, um, but yeah, I can, I can go anywhere and paint anywhere. Do you mind if people take pictures of you while you're working on it? Nope, not at all. Are they allowed to take video? Yep, pictures, video, anything doesn't bother me. Just Questions. hashtag you? Yeah, hashtag Atomic Dice on Instagram. 
or we do have a Facebook fan page, which is also Atomic Dice. I, I appreciate it when people take video and pictures and um, you're welcome to share our name with it. We like to, you know, get out there and show that we're, we're in this and we like to do it. Yeah, and people can go to our website at AtomicDice.com and our full calendar of events are located on the website. Um, and we're always looking for new shows that we can go to. You travel up and down the East Coast, right? Yeah. But I've, you're... I've never been... I'd like to get out to the West Coast. Um, I just haven't had an opportunity or a show pop up. But I would like to get out to California, <clears throat> you know, down south. And you do more than motorcycles, right? Oh, yeah. I do just about everything. I do bikes, cars, helmets. Um, I I do just about everything. You've painted a cooler before. I've painted coolers. Purses, um, shoes. I've even painted, a, I've got a bedpan over there i got to paint. And toilet seats. Toilet seats, <laughs> guitars. And I don't just paint. <clears throat> I'm an illustrator, that's how I started, um, well I started drawing cars and motorcycles and all that when I was in grade school and my father actually taught me how to draw a car correctly and I still use his same formula even now and but I started out drawing and I don't just paint and do this stuff on cars and bikes just because I'm a painter, I am a hot rodder, I am a motorcycle enthusiast, I enjoy this, um, but I do illustration, and I'm kind of known for my monsters and my weirdo art, um, it's very, I, I try to make things unique for each customer, I, I'm not much for reproduction, I like to, to work and see what taps out of my brain. You have some top secret talents that you haven't had a chance to work with because you're always so busy painting. Well, I went to art school in Cleveland and I am trained in illustration and actually many, many other types of art, but I do leather work. I just, nobody's seen it. I actually don't have time to do it. So leather tooling? Um, leather tooling. Custom seats. I do engraving. People don't know that. But I just, I never have time to, you know, just do it, put it out there so people can see it. Because I get a lot of orders for paint. And also, I do logo design, t-shirt design, um, any type of illustration. Some people just want an illustration of their car or hot rod or motorcycle just to give us a gift or just to hang up. So lately you've been doing some really cool things with monsters and actually turning people into a monster so they can have their own personalized monster. Tell me about what you did at the AMA Vintage Motorcycle Days. Well, I have a, a guy from Simpson Motorcycle Helmets. His name's Scott. And we were lucky enough to meet him, and he gave me his personal helmet and wanted something special. He said I could do whatever I wanted, so we chose to go with um, doing a likeness of him, but in my monster form. And I just took a few elements of things that he liked, or things that he's known for, and things that he is... Um, into and created the monster on the back and it actually went over quite well so subscribe to our YouTube and you can see some videos relating to that monster video um, and that monster helmet I think you'll really enjoy watching uh, what Bob had to do there any last words well I thank everybody for supporting this what we do and being interested in it and I try to get the younger kids interested in it when kids come up to me at shows I always try to take time and you know let them 
let them see the work and give them tips or pointers, anything I can to try and keep this going because everybody says it's a dying art and it truly is. Um, a lot of the guys I looked up to are either retiring or passed away and um, <clears throat> or just getting out of it because eventually you get to a point where your hands just shake and you can't do it. So but, what's the difference between doing this and using vinyl? Everybody's starting to move to vinyl. Vinyl's a machine. It's it has its it has its perks but it has its downfalls and a lot of people that want hand painted it's they want the craft they want our craft they want to say it's hand painted by an artist and it's a unique piece rather than just a printed off piece you know just as vinyl is but it's printed off it's mass produced does this it last longer in my in when vinyl came out, this definitely was outlasting it. Now you're kind of in a close race because the technology's changed, but it still doesn't hold up. It's still, as we live in Ohio, it still will not hold up compared to a hand-painted piece. It'll, this will last longer and stay brighter than any piece of vinyl. Do you teach classes? I do. I do pinstriping classes. I do a beginner class. Um, the beginner class, I uh, give you everything you need to work with to get started, and then we move on to an intermediate and a pro class. So you supply the paint, the brushes, the panel, everything? Yep, and what we do is we go through the basics, go through the brush basics, and then we move on to um, actually working designs, and then by the end of the class, the end of the class day, what we do is we all take our panels um, and then we go line by line. I make a line, class makes a line, and then you have a finished piece, paint, brushes, everything you need to get started and go home and practice by the end of the day. All right. Well, I think we made it past our last words with more questions. So we'll sign off and everybody have a great day. I hope you enjoyed the video and we have many more to come. Again, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Atomic Dice. Uh, thank you. Have a great day. Thank you.